Hello, somebody that's praying. Man, we're back at the Rio Grande Gorge and the Rio Grande River. This is uh, where we were several months ago. There was The river was running a lot bigger and a lot faster as the snow was melting off. And we had still three to five feet of snow everywhere uh, we went uh, in this area. It was pretty incredible, as beautiful as a matter of fact. Uh, the river looked fantastic. I just wanted to show you that again. Christian's going to show you that, uh, that the river is still rolling. It's just a little lower. This is the river that eventually runs all through our state and, uh, and around our area as well. And so, anyway, it's beautiful. It's a great place to come if you've never been here. Great place to bring your kids to see this. Uh, it's not quite the Grand Canyon, but it's really super cool. And when you drive through the mountains, uh, you'll see it. Uh, off the mountains, you'll see the whole gorge running through this valley. It's That's pretty awesome, too. So when you come through the mountains, uh, look to your left if you're heading towards Taos, and you'll see it. And when you're on this bridge, it's pretty crazy. It's a single suspension bridge. Every car that goes by, you hear the vibe, you feel the vibrations of this bridge vibrating as these vehicles go by. But, you know, Taos is once again the place where worship of the sun and the moon, worship of the, the created things over God took place. And in Romans 1, it says they exchanged the truth about God for a lie. I've run into person after person in this area that worships the, cre the creation, not the creator. They call them the spirit creator, uh, and they do it because they want to justify their life. They, wanna, they believe in shamans and witches, so they've combined a spirit of religion that's dominated the state with a spirit of witchcraft. And, man, this dominates this place, severely dominates it. And the combination of the witchcraft, and then I ran into two young men I ministered to and prayed for, and they, they wouldn't pray with me. Um, man, they just, they drink. They have generations of alcoholism in their family. They, uh, man, I could tell there's a spirit of religion, of Catholicism on them, and they just don't understand anything about the Word and about God. They, they've not really been taught. They've been taught, like other denominations, how to be a good Baptist or how to be a good Methodist and how to be a good Catholic, but not necessarily, or a good Lutheran, but not necessarily just how to be a Christian and honor the Word, read the Word for themselves and study the Word of God and listen to the Word and obey the Word and live the Word. And so they haven't been taught that, and so... I mean, it's crazy how beautiful this place is, but it's also crazy the, the spirits that are here. And we stood on Mount Lobo, all of us together, and prayed. I stood there, and we all prayed together against this, and I'm still, I'm still praying about it. I'm praying that God drives out all those that perpetrate this, these lies and, and, and uh, exchange the truth for a lie about God. They lie about who God is constantly. They lie about who God is. And, uh, and so we're going to end that and that he, they either change, that, that's my hope is that they'll, that God will pour out his spirit and they'll change or that God will drive them out of our state and that the, the righteous will, will take over this place and establish and dedicate it to the things of God. And I know there's got to be some here, but I tell you, I haven't ran into one. Um, so they're few and far between. I haven't seen one great Christian church here either. The number, the, the number one new buildings I've seen throughout this whole area is Mormons. And we're going to talk about the kingdom of the cults. And we're going to talk about all the different cults that, that take a little bit of truth and add a lot of lies to it. And then call themselves Christians or call themselves this or another thing. And it's not true. And so we're going to deal with that sometime in a series that I'm going to teach. But I want to share one more scripture with you because what do we do in the meantime? Well, a friend of mine sent this to me today. It's a great scripture. I've been meditating on this scripture for some time. And um, it's Isaiah 26, 3. It says, you will keep, he will keep you in perfect peace. All who trust in him and whose thoughts are fixed on you or stayed on you. He'll give you perfect peace if you focus on Jesus and keep your thought life, control your thought life, and keep it fixed on his word, on him, on his goodness, on his mercy. Uh, that's his glory. And on his grace, his unmerited favor, his gift to us of, of uh, a relationship with him through Jesus. And so let's, let's fix our focus, uh, our eyes, the eyes of our mind, the eyes of our imagination, our thoughts on Jesus today because that's what we got to keep doing. We got to keep on, keep on, keep on focusing on Him, praying things out, believing for these miracles in our lives that we're praying for, in the miracle of of 
um, release of freedom coming and driving out all these spirits of oppression. And so anyway, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus today. Do not take your thoughts off of him because his perfect love drives out all fear that, that what is, looks impossible to you, uh, it, it's not impossible to him. And you need to get that fear and that doubt off of you so you can focus on uh, God doing a miracle, not just in your life, but in all of our lives. And so anyway, I love you. Keep praying. Uh, day 39, got one more day. Day 40 tomorrow, we'll climb up Mount Wheeler and pray there too. So love you. God bless you. Have a great day.